Hello and welcome to a race that I completely forgot even existed. I'm going to hire the manager and the agent because I plan on taking this far. It's the impossible race. So I'm calling this one Caging the Beast at Melbourne because this beast he definitely can't go off track at Melbourne, which is something you see me doing in other endurance races. It's one of the things you have to do if you want to do it endless endurance racing. So at Melbourne here, it's all about just really good racing, no real tricks, because you can't really do any. And hitting the walls is just gonna suck up speed and eventually damage me, so you gotta stay off those walls. Now I'm having to take it really easy uh, this first lap. Interesting thing about hitting walls in a car like this, if you hit them hard enough, it often doesn't matter. Like, you can get away with an awful lot of wall damage. You cannot get away with very much vehicle on vehicle damage, but, there are some tricks to that, and we're gonna get into that a little bit. I've got some examples here. You'll, you'll see I'm doing a little bit of scraping. You can get away with an awful lot of side scraping. You can't get away with very much front damage. So front end hitting another vehicle is almost always a, that's gonna really do it in for you. So I'm not really sure currently what the best method is at Melbourne. I usually recommend to people avoid damage at least until you hit the perpetual point. And if you're new to my videos, I'll explain it. Uh, other people have heard me say it lots, but that's fine. Perpetual point is when you get to a point of the race where you could keep going forever. The bots will start to get pretty close together. Uh, it varies by track. Some tracks, they get super close together. Other tracks, not so much. And uh, the secret to the perpetual point is pretty simple. You just need to pass 42 cars. Once you've done that, you will be at the perpetual point. So people ask me a lot of times, where is it? It's not at a specific place. It's not at a specific distance. It's once you pass 42 cars. You need to get that done. Ooh, boy, that's a big tag, isn't it? You need to pass those 42 cars as quick as possible because the closer you get to the perpetual point, the further apart the cars are spaced, which means you're gonna have less and less time to catch them because you're gonna have less time per lap. Like if you watch at the line here, well, I'm gonna fill up my timer, but at Melbourne, <clears throat> we'll have to pay attention. I don't know if it's 12 or 16 seconds. You don't get a lot of time for crossing the line. Of course, you get 10 seconds for every car you pass. That's the same in every endurance race. But I don't remember what we get when we cross the line. So you have to pay attention to that. Now, again, I'm doing a little too much squeezing. That's getting a little bit rough and tough. Uh, hitting that wall, lots of tagging. This chicane, if no one's in your way, you dig it full throttle in this car, which is downright shocking, honestly. Uh, lost it on that corner. This is a this is a tricky car. This is one of the harder cars to control. Uh, settings. I am using tilt B controls, steering sensitivity zero. All of my assists are off, and that is pretty important. Although you could probably get away with steering assist low here just fine, and maybe even traction control. I would still recommend you don't. Um, Okay, right, let's see, check this out. Okay, you might think I got heavily damaged from that. I actually didn't, not a bit. And the secret to that is I wasn't on the brakes and I wasn't on the gas. If you think you're about to hit someone, let go of the controls. Okay, this is where tilt A is gonna get you in trouble. Tilt B will let you coast. And if you're coasting, if you go back to that, you'll notice there was no horrible crunching sound. Now, if you, if you go back to one of the other laps, I hit about 343, 345 as my maximum speed down that that section. I just hit it again. So I, even with all of this contact, I haven't got damage, like quote unquote damage. There's only two levels of damage. And honestly, at Melbourne, um, top speed damage isn't gonna affect us at all. The, ooh, that's a problem. That probably just took my, my some of my abilities away. Um, braking, acceleration, and grip is what's going to hurt us at Melbourne, especially through this chicane. I love that chicane. You almost got to do it by muscle memory in a car like this. So, we're going to... I'm going really far. I'm taking this to 100 kilometers. That's my goal. So, so I'm just going to let this go. We're going to watch this play-by-play -play until I'm sure I hit the perpetual point. Then we're going to zip forward because otherwise this would be a pretty long video. So I'm not gonna, cause it gets super repetitive. Like after a while, you really know what I'm doing. Like this is already lap eight. And I just, I'm at this point, I realized, you know what? Let's just start to use up this car. It's already got maximum damage because of those hits. 
So I'm gonna start to hit people and I'm not gonna worry about it at all. Which, well, we'll just see what that does for me. Now I've done this race in the past in the Ferrari uh, 412 T2 or T2 412, I forget the proper way to say that. And that was surprisingly cool. Very good paying race in that car. And I realized, you know, if I did it with that car, it might be easier in this car. I'd say it is actually. I'd say it's easier in this car. This is my third time doing this race. My first time, I just saw the perpetual point and race ended. Second time, I hit the perpetual point, but I was like, ridiculously sloppy. I mean, this isn't too, too much better sometimes, but it's hard with these walls. So I decided, you know what? Let's give it a third try. I'm gonna go for 100 kilometers. So that tag there, not a big deal. Okay, next lap. Let's time my lap and let's figure out my average speed. So that's the exact distance I had when I was crossing the line and that's the time that the video was at. So you can go back and check that out for yourself. I'm taking it from when my car was halfway across the start finish line, mainly because that's the best freeze frame I could get and I should be able to match that up at the end of this lap. But I'm picking this lap because I was pretty clean. I still was over braking a little bit here or there but this is pretty clean. Coming out of this corner especially can be tricky. Very nice. Okay, let's check it out at the line. There we go. So that works out to 2.6 kilometers and 33.356 seconds. 283 kilometers an hour, 176 miles per hour is my average speed. Rounding up a little bit. Now, of course, this lap, it's going to be worse because I've already tagged the wall pretty bad. But if you were racing reasonably clean, that's stinking fast man like that's a shock in this car and you can see that i i can stay full throttle through there once in a while i'm lifting i'm gonna muscle that guy out <laughs> you can see i'm i'm using my bumper now i don't really care because i already got damaged i don't want to get tangled up in a major crash though so i'm still going to be careful love that chicane that chicane is where you get major gains on the bots the bots really slow down for that chicane uh, same with the mid-race, ooh, that was a bit too bad. Uh, same with the mid-race chicane that we're coming up very quickly here. The bots always break for it, every single time, so watch this. He's way ahead of me, no problem. Well, I'm gonna shove him into the corner a bit. Uh, see if I can do this, oh, well, I'll just dance around him a little bit. Okay, I should be coming really close. I'm already in first place here. You can see that none of my friends, at least the ones I'm racing against, haven't done this. Doesn't mean none of my friends have done this. I've just never heard about this. Never seen a video about it, not really sure why. Ooh, that was nasty. Okay, let's check it out. I think this is the perpetual point. See, when I did this in the Ferrari, the bots were never very close, which made it challenging. So the thing I wanna see is, can I max out my timer? Can I fill it up again? Yep, I've definitely hit the perpetual point. See how close the bots are? And that means if you go back and add up all the cars I passed, you would see that I'm past 42 cars now. So, we'll let this go one more lap just to see if I can fill up that timer. And then we will warp ahead to me hitting 100 kilometers and then we'll see how profitable this is. Because that's the number one question is, is it profitable? Now, first off, sometimes it's just fun. It's just fun to try something different in this game, something challenging. I'm definitely, oh, I did that one on purpose. Definitely nicely past the perpetual point now and Pretty sure this, you'll see me fill the timer and then we'll be warp ahead. So right there, fill the timer. Here we are. I want to stop at exactly 100 kilometers, so I threw the thing sideways just to make sure I don't want to overdo it. We'll come to a stop at 100 kilometers and then we'll just take a quick look to see the damage that my vehicle's got here. Um, cracked windshield means I definitely had damage and we can see, yeah, there's cracks and a bunch of damage to the front end. That also means I had max damage speeding 16 times regular speed and now watch closely off track penalty that's because you can get your left sides off track on some of the corners here it's kind of shocking okay profitability let's look at the fame and r per minute since i hired the agent and the manager i'll show you numbers with and without and unfortunately the fame per minute really isn't that great and i removed the friends bonus because you might not have all the friends that i've got this race is a lot of fun, especially in this car, but if you're looking for profitability, go do it in the Ferrari 412 T2 over in Ferrari Evolution. Here's a video for that one and some other stuff. 
Please like and subscribe and race you later.